robust uh, mixed signal IP flow from 750, uh, I'm sorry, 7 nanometer to 350 nanometer. So first I'll give you an overview of the talk. Uh, we'll start by giving an overview of silicon creations. Uh, we've provided uh, 350 mixed signal IPs from 700, 7 nanometer to 350 nanometer, and we've been able to do this in 12 different foundries. Uh, we support a majority of the IP segments, um, consumer, IoT, automotive, uh, aerospace. So this talk will cover uh, some of the challenges we face as an IP company and as an industry, uh, the robust flow we've come up with to overcome these challenges, and the growing difficulty we all face with process complexity. This is an overview of Silicon Creations. So again, we're an analog mixed signal IP provider. Uh, we specialize in CERTES IPs and PLL IPs. Uh, we were founded in 2006. Uh, we're privately held. We have design centers in uh, Krakow, Poland, and also Atlanta, Georgia, where uh, I'm working from. On the uh, right side, you can see um, this is uh, our customers. So we have, at the time uh, now, we have over 130 different customers. Uh, we have uh, over 200 IP products. Um, we've got uh, over 300 chips in production, and you can see on the right side we have uh, 10 nanometer and 16 nanometer turning on, and you can see uh, the production numbers for uh, the older geometries as well. This is just an overview of our PLL products. Uh, so as uh, all of you may know, PLLs are some of the highest volume uh, analog IP products. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, from TSMC's 28 nanometer node, uh, we have a single IP instance that's on uh, 88 different production chips. Uh, this, is, um, this corresponds to 550,000 wafers. Uh, from our calculations, this is over a billion instances of this one PLL in production. So it's uh, quite high uh, volume indeed. So this is going to require a uh, robust uh, design flow uh, to get this right. We have uh, general purpose PLL products, low jitter products. These are for your AFB and your CERTES. We have uh, microwatt PLLs uh, and then uh, automotive PLLs as well. Uh, as an IP company, we also provide uh, CERTES IP. Uh, so on the right, uh, you can see an example of our uh, 28 nanometer uh, CERTES. So we have uh, what I believe is a, a robust architecture, um, well-proven and low-risk. Um, so you can see, uh, as an example on the right, the uh, wide um, continuous uh, operating range. On the bottom, you can see the uh, DFE operation uh, over a, a pretty stressful channel. So I'll switch gears now and talk a little bit about the front-end design challenges we face. Uh, so as an IP vendor, um, we're tasked with um, sort of a unique challenge. We have a tape out basically in a uh, different process and a different geometry every week. So we need to come up with a, a design flow to address that. Uh, so the diagram on the right side shows uh, what we've come up with um, to address that. So uh, we have a process and uh, foundry um, independent design flow that we've developed. And so um, by having our own design flow, our own um, uh, we can basically share schematics across foundry, across geometry, uh, across technology. So now um, a PLL product in 180 nanometer and 7 nanometer can share schematics from the top level, the core, uh, down to the block level. And very um, only at the very bottom, uh, the gates, do we need to change the 7 nanometer gates for the 180 nanometer gates. So this allows us to port quickly, uh, robustly, and, and with low, low risk. Uh, this slide shows a design example. So this is a 28 nanometer and a 10 nanometer schematic uh, from some of our PLLs. So as you can see, um, with the 10 nanometer case, the analog still lives in FinFET. So uh, even in the most advanced geometries, uh, analog is still alive. Uh, some of the challenges we're facing going forward is the variability. So of course, um, as the we get to smaller and smaller geometries, uh, we're faced with more variability. So that means a lot more Monte Carlo runs. Another issue we face is the um, parasitics. So as the geometries get smaller and smaller, the uh, parasitics become more important. So uh, the schematic is uh, deviating from the, the post layout uh, reality. Uh, 
and I'll talk more about that uh, as we go on. Uh, this slide shows uh, a back-end example. So uh, we have a front-end uh, design flow that's a meant to address the changing uh, process and, and geometries. We have the same thing on the back end. So on the right, we can see an example layout from uh, one of our uh, 40 nanometer products and 180 nanometer products. Uh, so we developed a, a design kit that uh, can scale with um, uh, geometry and also um, produce a, a design that's, uh, that works across foundries. So this has uh, really helped us to develop uh, robust IP um, as the processes change, as the foundries change. On these next uh, few slides, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the process complexity and some of the challenges uh, that this poses. Uh, so for the next uh, three examples, I'm going to use uh, a PLL that we have, um, same functional block from 7 nanometer uh, all the way up to 180 nanometer. And we're going to use this um, same functional block to compare uh, across uh, uh, different uh, geometries. Uh, so as you can see on the uh, graph on the right, this is the number of uh, GDS layers. Uh, so again, uh, same block diagram, same number of uh, metals. Um, you can see a 180 nanometer PLL has about 22 GDS layers. The, it's the uh, geometry scale down, uh, by the time we hit 7 nanometer, uh, we're over 120 GDS layers. So you can see that a process is getting uh, quite a bit more complex uh, for the same uh, analog mixed signal block. Uh, this is um, maybe not the most accurate way to uh, compare processes, but uh, one that we find interesting. So this is the relative uh, design row manual size. So we're kind of measuring the thickness of the design row manual here. So uh, for those of you that remember uh, 350 nanometer design, uh, we'll use that as a reference. So sort of as uh, time goes by, um, you can see that the design row manual in 7 nanometer is uh, 18 times thicker than the uh, 350 nanometer node. So the design rule manuals have gotten uh, so thick, you have uh, over a thousand pages of design rules. It, it's not something that we can all read through. So um, this has made uh, designing the back end uh, quite a bit more complicated. Uh, the last measure we have uh, in this talk for the process complexity is the, the DRC runtime. So um, here we're using uh, the same PLL again, um, comparing the 180 nanometer to uh, down to the 7 nanometer PLL. So uh, you can see the um, graph of the DRC runtime. So uh, 180 nanometer is kind of falling off the charts there at 1x, but then at the bottom, uh, the 7 nanometer is also uh, off the charts in the other direction. So we can see uh, basically uh, across these nodes, the, the DRC runtime has gone up over 400 times. So by the time you hit um, FinFET, uh, your DRC runtime is 100x what it was for older geometries. Uh, and it's just getting worse. Uh, so this has really caused a uh, big explosion in the cost um, it, it of developing uh, advanced IPs. Uh, I think um, maybe counterbalancing this sum is the work that the EDA companies are doing. So I think these guys are doing a lot of work to keep the, uh, the runtime down. But of course, uh, it's, getting, um, it's getting quite bad. Uh, I'll switch gears here and talk a little bit about analog scaling. So there's some debate, uh, does analog scale? So uh, fortunately, we've got the same uh, block diagram here uh, across the different geometries, and uh, we can do a little bit to compare. Uh, so taking the 180 nanometer as a relative area of 1, uh, we can see how that scales versus uh, geometry. So uh, as you can see here, the um, PLL area, so this is um, sort of an example of uh, mixed signal IP, and other mixed signals I I IPs uh, scale the same way. So sort of by the time we get down to uh, 10 and 7 nanometer, the area has shrunk by quite a bit. So it's roughly one-tenth of the area of a 180 nanometer PLL. Um, but if we compare that to the digital scaling, of course, the, the digital scaling is uh, scaling about 600 to 1. At the same time, the analog is scaling uh, 10 to 1. So uh, I think as a mixed signal provider, we're, we're doing our part to scale. But uh, of course, we're not scaling as fast as the, um, uh, the digital is scaling. Uh, this next slide, I'm trying to, um, for those of you not uh, PLL designers, uh, not CERTES designers, uh, this is uh, my way of uh, trying to communicate how difficult it is to simulate and verify CERTES uh, and also PLLs. Uh, so if we look at the, the time scales involved, so sort of at the uh, high end, we have the jitter requirements. Um, this would be on the order of uh, 100 femtoseconds, so quite a time, a small time step. 
as we go through bit rates and word rates and lock times and link behaviors, uh, we're up to a millisecond. So this is uh, basically 10 orders of magnitude. So um, a simulation of a uh, Surtees link needs to maintain uh, accuracy over uh, ten, a 10 orders of magnitude in time. So it's, it's quite a difficult challenge. Uh, this kind of dates me a little bit, but um, I wanted to give an overview of uh, sort of a simulation history during my career. So I started in the late 90s, and um, as you can see here, I've got um, kind of a little table here which compares that. So kind of in the late 90s, the um, simulating a PLL was a, a difficult kind of thing. So we'd, um, to make the simulation finish before tape out, we'd often preset the loop filter and run some other tricks. Uh, three weeks later, we'd have a lock simulation and, and we'd tape out. Uh, sort of by 2001, um, things were a little bit better. The schematic simulation took about a week, so uh, things, were things were advancing. By 2006, maybe three days for a schematic lock simulation. By 2011, a few days for an extracted simulation, so we could now uh, look at CC results. Uh, by 2017, if you're working in an older geometry such as 65 nanometer, uh, you can just kick off a whole bunch of extracted simulations. The tools are good enough. You get the results in the morning. So things have definitely improved, but uh, on the flip side, uh, the RC is um, making things worse, and I'm going to now talk about some of the uh, RC effects on the simulation time. Uh, this, this plot here shows the relative sheet resistance. So here I'm comparing just 40 nanometer down to 7 nanometer. So as the uh, geometries get smaller and smaller, uh, even the, the sheet resistance is going up. So uh, this has a big impact on the uh, accuracy. So um, basically the designs are being limited more and more by uh, wire performance. So it's increasingly important to simulate not just CC extracted, but RC extracted. Uh, so We'll see what the effect is here. Uh, so this is a 28 nanometer example. So um, this is measuring relative simulation time for a VCO. So if we start with a schematic as a baseline, uh, the schematic simulation is about a, a 1x simulation. If we move to a CC extracted simulation, that goes to uh, about two, two and a half times. Uh, by the time we get to an RC extracted simulation, uh, we're over 20 times the simulation time of a schematic net list. So simulators get better and better and better. The wires get worse and worse and worse. Um, so really, we're not much better off. So uh, one note, um, people are doing a lot of RC reduction. So a lot of the tools uh, can do RC reduction. So this helps to uh, bring the RC time down. Uh, but it's still adding cost. Uh, the figure here uh, shows a SERTI stack. So for those of you familiar with the SERTIs, we'll start at the bottom with the, um, the PMD. This is the driver, the receiver. Um, the dash box here contains the um, what's typically a, a mixed signal macro. This is the uh, PMA. So um, if we look at the bottom here, a lot of this in the orange can be simulated in SPICE. Uh, so this is a mixed signal block. SPICE is appropriate. When we get to the green blocks, uh, these are digital blocks, the PCS, the controller, and so on. Uh, but it's important uh, to simulate basically the whole system and verify the whole system. So uh, really, SPICE is not an appropriate tool. It's got to be Verilog. Uh, so what's needed to si simulate the whole system is an accurate uh, Verilog model um, or a really, really fast SPICE simulator. But uh, Verilog is what we use. Uh, so it's important for an IP provider to provide um, a Verilog an accurate Verilog model of the bottom part so that the whole stack can be simulated. So at Silicon Creations, we have uh, a nice design flow where we can take the LVS netlist. So it's basically every gate that we're going to give you in the design, we netlist that. We make a Verilog D model. Uh, we capture a lot of the analog behavior with the um, difference equations and analog modules. So we can give you basically a gate level accurate uh, model of the whole stack, uh, mixed signal IP and all. Uh, switching gears again, um, I'll talk a little bit about reliability. So with the reliability, um, this is becoming uh, increasingly important, especially for automotive. Uh, so we use a, a mix of internal tools and uh, external to tools to make sure that the IP we deliver is uh, reliable. So on the top right, we have a graphic here of our uh, internal tools. So we have an internally developed flow that we've done, uh, which, which um, does a really accurate um, uh, electromigration flow. So we, we can um, quite accurately check um, our, our IP for uh, electromigration. 
Uh, variation analysis, uh, this is also becoming quite important for mixed signal IP. So it's, um, people look for really, really, really high um, production numbers. Um, it's quite important for uh, IP to be verified with uh, high sigma analysis. So the, the plot on the bottom shows the output of uh, some of the high sigma analysis that we can do. Uh, lastly, aging. Uh, aging is um, of increasing importance to um, customers, but also increasingly uh, better supported by foundries. So uh, foundries these days are providing SPICE models, which uh, um, incorporate uh, aging models. So we're able to verify um, our circuits uh, with the foundry uh, aging models. Uh, here I'll talk a little bit about automotive. So with uh, mixed signal IP, there's uh, historically been a set of uh, deliverables, GDS, Netlist, uh, documentation, and so on. With automotive, uh, there's even higher requirements for deliverables. Uh, so there's a lot of added views necessary. Uh, some of these, I guess, uh, design margin reports. So customers, automotive uh, especially, are, are requiring design margin reports. Uh, design reliability reports. So these, these cover over-voltage, electro-migration, uh, IR drop, aging. Uh, this is an important deliverable as well. A safety manual. So if the IP is going to be integrated in a chip, uh, we need a safety module uh, even at the block level. Uh, there's also a FMEDA report. Uh, so this includes uh, failure statistics uh, for the IP as a whole and for each sub-block and each sub-block's function in the IP. Uh, to put it all together, uh, we need a robust cross-checking flow. So um, if we're going to deliver robust IP uh, for the user, we need to make sure that all the views uh, interact and are uh, compatible. So uh, in the schematic here, we have the delivered views. So we have a set of delivered views, and the blue blocks show the starting points. Uh, and then you can see all of the cross-checks necessary. So this is uh, really important to develop uh, consistent, uh, reliable IP. So now I'll uh, conclude. So I invite you to um, explore uh, Silicon Creations IP. So you can find this at uh, chipestimate.com. Uh, I'd also encourage you to come visit me. So we have a booth down the hall by TSMC. Uh, and then lastly, um, feel free to find me after the talk uh, or, e or, or by email. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jeff. <laughs> and just as he said that uh, you can I have the Silicon Creations website open on, on our, uh, our demo station there, ready to go. So people could go check out all the IP available from Silicon Creations. I think we have someone doing that right now. Oh, okay, good. Well, I queued it up, ready to go. So thank you so much, and uh, stick around for our next presentation. Um, and uh, Jeff, thank you again. Great presentation. Thank you very much.